Jamie, we've got a few uh, fans' questions. That's all right. Um, what, what was it like using the oxygen chamber? Because I know you were, you were in there trying to speed up your recovery. What was that? Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's quite nice and relaxing to be honest. Um, you're in there for about an hour and a half, um, obviously getting the oxygen in, which which speeds up. You know what they say, the blood flow to it and speeds up recovery. So I took a book in and have a little read or the paper and, and sort of just chilled for an hour and a half. Uh, so yeah, it was it was good. Yeah, and did you feel benefits from it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I'm back probably ahead of schedule. So, you know, I did four four sessions um, in the first two weeks. So uh, the plan was to get me back, back quickly. Um, and, you know, I feel I am back probably quicker than, than fourth. So yeah, I think it's definitely helped. Yeah, brilliant. Um, what's, I think we've spoken about this before. What's the, what's the best goal of your career? And uh, also the worst miss of your career? Um, me. <laughs> best goal, I think I've said, yeah, said before, it's probably not the best actual finish, but um, for importance was uh, my goal, uh, Reading v Brentford, um, which, which basically secured us uh, promotion. So I think just of importance, that was probably the best. But I mean, I'm one of them, I treat any goal as, you know, a special one for myself. Yeah. And the worst miss, oh, blimey, I've probably missed a few. Um, I can't really think off the top of my head. Um, God, I'll have to I'll have to think about that one. That's, yep. that's sort of the misses I keep out of, out of my head. I try and forget about. <laughs> yeah. them, to be honest. Okay, concentrate on the positive. Yeah. Um, from what you've seen, who do you think's got the most potential in the squad here, and, and why? Um, I'd, you'd have to probably look at Zach at the moment. I think for his age um, and and what he's sort of doing, he, he, he's forced his way into the team. Um, you know, obviously it's his, it's his first year, sort of. Uh, you know, in the first team squad, so to be pushing already for a starting place, um, and when he has come on, done very well. Um, I think you have to look at him. He's he's got everything, you know, that you'd want from a winger. Um, he just needs to learn the game, um, be coached obviously a bit more, and, and just experience. So, you know, I'm hopeful if if Zach, you know, can sort of keep progressing in the way he has, then he's got a real bright future. Yeah. Okay. Uh, somebody's asked uh, what, how the move to Asia came about. Excuse me, um, came about, and, and what happened over there. Uh, basically, I was out of contract at, at uh, Reading um, and, and was in negotiations to sign a new deal. Um, and my agent uh, gave me a call, and I had a, a, an offer from Asia and America. Um, so I thought, okay, why not have a look at them? Um, so I flew out to America, uh, Asia first for five days, and had a look around. Um, really, sort of was, was blown away by the setup and stuff. Uh, everything was, was real good. Um, contract was agreed whilst I was out there, so I come home. Uh, then went to America and the same again really um, it was real early on obviously so it wasn't like it was now but was still um, you know excited about the challenge um, and just come back uh, spoke to a few other English teams I had a, you know a lot of other options um, and just thought you know why not it was an option that I didn't really expect to come up and um, just thought it might be an exciting challenge I, I had recently just split up with my, my, my ex-partner and, um, and whatnot and it just felt like a maybe a move to get away um, so I did um, but I left uh, two kids at home with, with my ex so that was probably the main reason why I come back um, and it didn't last as long long as I'd have liked because I, I didn't take into account the sort of time being away from them um, but on a whole I mean the place was, was brilliant uh, loved the life there um, football was good and facilities were, were top class and it was just probably the timing wasn't right um, but because the option was there I just felt why not and, yeah. and give it a go but it probably needed to be a bit later on in my career. I was still fairly young, and um, like I say, miss my kids and, and miss the buzz of English football. So it's a shame because it, it had everything there that, I, that you know you could want, but they're probably moves that maybe a bit later on in your career. Okay. Um, <clears throat> was the shoulder injury the most painful moment of your career? Yes, definitely. Um, I fractured my leg, and I've done other had other knocks here and there and stuff. But for instant pain. I've never had any, felt a bit like it, and uh, it took a while to get it back in as well. So I don't think I got it in for another hour and a half later. Um, so yeah, it, as initial pain, I, I felt sick and, and all sorts. So yes, yeah, I wouldn't wish it on anyone to be. Yeah. Honest. I think you answered it earlier, but if you're in the same position, would you go for it again? Yeah, definitely. Like I said, the, the, the actual you don't think about um, what's going to happen after. And, you know, I don't. My my fault is a goal, and um, you know, I, I seen there was an opportunity and went for it. I, it seemed quite simple to me and even the landing seemed fairly simple and I don't know just unfortunately uh, for some reason it, I fell awkwardly and, and it popped out so yeah I mean if, if I played on Saturday and a similar opportunity I probably wouldn't think about my shoulder I'd, I'd go for it again and 
and that'll be that. And if obviously it popped out again, that's, that's sort of the price you pay. Yeah. Okay. Who's the most influential manager you've played under? Um, probably Holloway. I would imagine I was with him from 21. Uh, I think I spent five years with him at Rovers. Um, I'd known him from a kid anyway, and we were quite good friends. So I'd imagine just a lot of how he was with me. Um, I probably didn't pay much attention to it at the beginning, but um, later on in, in my life, um, I've learned a lot more, you know, from it, from from how he was and the experiences he gave me. Played me in different positions, and you know, it was all about work ethic and you know, professionalism. So uh, I, I probably would say Ollie as, yeah. as a whole, but I have worked under some some real good ones. Okay, um, obviously he works hard in the game, but do you think we've been born with a gift for goal scoring? Um, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, I've done it from a kid. I, I, something I've always done. I was always goal hanging, and when we used to play Wembley and stuff as a seven-year-old, and always wanted to score, and and always sort of did. And um, throughout my whole sort of career, um, from Sunday football, uh, youth football at Norwich, I, I broke records. Um, so yeah, I've always scored. So. Um, I suppose from from being born, I was given that gift, and obviously you have to work on it. But um, but yeah, I'd say someone you know and handed me a gift to, to score goals, and yeah. hopefully I've uh, I've achieved that. Yeah. Okay, last couple. Um, if you could give one piece of advice to a young striker, what would it be? Um, work hard, really. I would say, and, and and listen to to people. You know, I was a very sort of cocky arrogant kid and thought I knew everything and knew best and when people are giving you advice they you know they truly be you know mean it and, and want you to do well and it is for your own benefit and um, sometimes you know I know I definitely did and, and went my own way on a lot of things and, and didn't listen and um, I'd say that you know take on advice you know really take it on and people are there to help um, and if you can do that with with ability that you have then you know you can go a long way yeah, okay um have you been giving much advice to the, the other strikers at Cheltenham? Um, I try to, yeah. I speak, spoke to Byron a fair bit. You know, I think he's a player that's got a, um, a hell of a lot of qualities, and um, you know, his game. You know, if he, when he's on his day, he's a sort of unstoppable. So, um, I've tried to help him and, and speak to him and, and, and just hand on stuff. Um, and even to the young boys, you know, I'm always there if, if, if people need advice. You know, I've obviously you know been in the game a long time and. Um, gone through a lot of stuff that probably they're going to go through. Um, so yeah, I, I've tried to help, and like I say, if the manager ever needed me to, to, to speak to people and stuff, I always would. Um, you know, I I, I I hate to see players that have got ability that, that, that waste it. So um, you know, if I can help in any way and give them any little advice, if it sticks and, and they take one bit of advice that I give them on and it helps them, then, then great. So you know, I, I do try my best to. to you know, pass on what I know. Yeah. Okay. The final one, Jamie. Um, have you got many good memories of, or anything stand out about playing against Portsmouth in the past? No, not really. I've only played against them a couple of times. I think. Right. Um, I think once was for Reading, um, down in Portsmouth. Um, I think we lost. So no, I've not got not got loads of memories. I haven't come up, like cross paths with them yeah. loads. So I think that was my last time I would have played. Would have been um, down at Fratton Park, Reading which would have probably been in the championship. So I think that was the year they actually went up with Harry oh. Redknapp um, when they'd have had Paul Merson and people like that. Yeah. So um, I f I'm sure we lost the game. Um, but that would have been my, my, my last sort of yeah. uh, time I'd come across. Yeah. Right, brilliant. Cheers, Jamie.